Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll begin with problem number 67. We're just going to do two problems, two very simple, very straightforward problems. Here's the first one. The question is what is the sum of three consecutive numbers if you are to represent the middle number with m? If m is the middle number. Well, if m is the middle number and we are told that they are consecutive numbers, they come one right after the other. If m is the middle number, then obviously that the one that comes after m is going to be one more than that. And then the one that comes before that is going to be one less than that. It's going to be one less than that, m minus one. And we are being asked to find the sum of these three numbers, so let's represent their sum with the letter S. Which letter you use here to represent their sum is up to you. You just have to specify in the beginning. Let S be the sum of the three numbers. That's it, we are done. We just have to simplify this thing. We have M here, M here, M here, that's 3M. And then positive, negative 1 and a positive 1, they're going to cancel out each other. And it turns out that the sum is simply 3 times M. And if you like, you can very quickly verify it. You take three numbers, let's say 3, 4, 5, their sum is going to be 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 5 is 12, and 12 is indeed 4 times, or rather 3 times 4. Not that it matters, but you see we have here 3m. 12, 12 is indeed 3 times m, which is our 4, which is the middle number. 3 times 4 is 12. And that's how you know that the answer is correct. Next question, part B, that was part A. Part B is, what is their product? Now, if the question is asking you what is their product, and as I always remind you, we are learning the algebra word problem, but we are also learning this, the, 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 we are learning this uh, skill to prepare ourselves, presumably, for one of these exams, whether it's GRE or GMAT or TES or HESIS or SAT or ACD. These are all multiple choice exams. So being able to come up with the answer is not enough. Your answer has to match one of the answer choices that is given to you in front of you. In other words, you have to present your answer, you have to manipulate your answer, you have to simplify your answer in the form that is given by the exam giver. And typically, they are given the, the answer choices, algebraic answer choices are given in their most simplest form. Let's see what we can do here. What is their product? So it's very simple. The first number was m minus 1. The next one was m. And the one after that is m plus 1. You can't just leave it like this. No, no, none of the answer choices are going to look like that. What we have to understand is that this is m minus 1, this is m plus 1, this is like, if you like, a minus b and a plus b. Now, do you remember what that is equal to? a plus b times a minus b. And if you don't remember the formula, just do it out. It only takes a second. a times a is going to be a squared. a times negative b. Negative b is going to be minus ab. b times a is going to be positive ab. And negative b and b times negative b is going to be negative b squared. So it turns out that a plus b, a plus b times a minus b is simply a minus, you see positive a b and negative a b. See this is negative a b here, let me put down the two a little bit higher so that you can see it. This is a squared. This negative a b, positive a b cancel out and it's simply a squared minus b squared. So you have a this is called difference of two squares. This formula is called difference of two squares. The reason why it's called difference of two squares is because that's exactly what it is. One quantity is being squared, the second quantity is being squared, and we're taking their difference. Difference of two squares. So m minus one and m plus one, m minus one times m minus m minus one times m plus one is simply going to be m squared minus one squared. m squared minus one squared is just m minus one. So let, let's write that underneath. So we can write this quantity as m times m plus one times m minus 1 and then you have to recognize that m plus 1 times m, m minus 1 is simply m squared minus 1 squared and 1 squared is just 1. So it's going to be the final answer is m times m squared minus 1. Until you present until you present your answer choice in this form you will have a tough time recognizing which of the five answer choices is the right answer because you have to make the transition from here to here. Once you have arrived here, it's always a good idea to take a couple of seconds very quickly and verify your answer. That's exactly what we always do, which is exactly what we're going to do now. We plugged in 3, 4, 5 before, which is exactly what we're going to continue using here. So if we have 3, 4, 5, 
if you have 3, 4, 5, their product is going to be 3 times 4 times 5, 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 times 5 is 60. If this answer gives us 60, then we know this is the right expression. M, remember M was the middle number, which is 4. So it's 4 times M squared, which is 4 squared, 4 squared minus 1, 4 squared is 16, 4 squared is 16, 16 minus 1 is 16 minus 1 is going to be 15, and 4 times 15, 4 times 15 is indeed, is indeed 60. And that's how we know that this answer is correct. The question was, what is their product? The answer is their product is m times m squared minus 1. And here is the, here is the verification of the answer choice. Let's go to the next one. Number 68. Number 68. What is the sum of the five consecutive numbers? What is the sum of five consecutive numbers if we are told G is the greatest? And we are to represent their sum, again, in the simplest form possible, in the most elegant form possible. So let's find out. We're looking for the sum, and we're looking for the sum of five numbers. They have to be consecutive, and G has to represent the biggest among the five. So instead of starting from this end, let's start from here, and we're going to go in reverse order. If that's the, that's the biggest one, the one before that, because they're consecutive, one before that has to be one less than that, which is going to be G minus one. And one before that is going to be one less than that. One less than G minus one is going to be G minus two. And then G minus three. And then G minus four. That's it, that's where the story ends. We have our five numbers. One, two, three, four, five. We have our five numbers. We're looking for their sum. So let's add them up. And let's give this let's this give, let's give this quantity a name. Again, I'm gonna call it S for the sum. And here we go. We just have to collect our like terms. So, so here we go. Here is here is one G, two G's, three G's, four G's, and five G's. We have five G's. And now we have to add up all the numbers. Let's take, let's take our time. We don't want to make a mistake here. So we have a negative 4 and a negative 3. That's going to be negative 7. Negative 7 and a negative 2 is negative 9. And negative 9 and a negative 1 is going to give us negative 10. Is that it? No, that's not it. That's not enough. That's the sum. Now we have to simplify it if we can. If there is a common factor, if there is a common factor between these two quantities, we have to take it out. And of course, the common factor is 5. Because this quantity is a multiple of 5 and this quantity is a multiple of 5. 10 is a multiple of 5. Of course, it can be written as 5 times 2. So 5 is the common factor. 5 happens to be the common factor. We need to take it out. Once we take out 5 as a common factor, from the first term we are left with g. From the second term we are left with 2. And that's our final answer. This is how it's going to be presented to you during the exam. The, the sum of the five consecutive numbers, sum of the five consecutive numbers such that G is to represent the highest number, the biggest number among the five, happens to be equal to five times the greatest number minus two. Let's see if it's correct or not. Shall we? Make up five numbers, doesn't matter. Just make up five numbers. Three, four, five, six, and seven. And this is our G. Because we are G, we are using it to represent the biggest number possible. Let's add them up. Let's add them up. That's very simple. 3 plus 7 is 10. And 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 plus 10 plus 5 is 20, 25. Turns out that the sum of these five numbers is 25. If this thing gives us 25, we are home free. So we have 5 times G, which is 7, minus 2. 7 minus 2 is 5. And 5 times 5 is indeed 25. And that tells us that we have not made a mistake. It's always a good idea to check your work. Bye now.